Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to day 24 of the Past Masters series, volume 2. Doo, 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 doo. Um, the painting I'm doing a study after today is by, uh, was by uh, Camille Corot. I'm just calling it evening. It's um, he he was pretty good about titling his work, so I'm sure it has some big long f French title, um, which I would be shortening anyway. So uh, actually, this is take two because I had to um, take two of the audio for this video. Uh, I had to sneeze. <laughs> I spared you that, but if you hear a few sniffles, just let it go, man. Just let it go. Okay. Anyway, um, I was mentioning that there's a site on the interwebs that uh, catalogs all of Camille Corot's uh, paintings, and um, it's kind of an older site though, so there's very small little thumbnails, especially on my, my big uh, monitor, and uh, uh, I can almost never find um, an actual painting I'm going after there or looking for the title. Um, and this is exacerbated by the fact that Camille was very prolific and also he worked with a very consistent sort of color palette it's all very silver, silvery and pearlescent Some, sometimes he went warm and sometimes he went cool but he also had a very consistent approach to his composition as well and um, uh, in a lot of ways, I feel like uh, Camille's a kindred spirit. I, we have some, we we diverge on technique, um, and his technique is is amazing. I'm not trying to say mine's better. I think his technique is is actually amazing, and I've seen it in real life at the Louvre in Paris. There's a lot of uh, Camille Corot paintings there, and. Uh, he gets this, this, this silvery, airish quality in his work. That's just you know, uh, was when he when he first uh, accomplished this was a major uh, evolution in landscape painting, and it's still you know it hasn't really been um, topped. Certain aspects of his uh, approach have not been topped by any modern painter. Um, so he's a good guy to study. Uh, study from if you are a modern painter uh, because you can get you can get a lot of um, insight from uh, making uh, studies after his work that would would apply to modern uh, painting modern landscape painting I should say now here comes one of those uh, sniffles I was going to warn you about okay All right like I said I spared you the sneeze um, now this is the the last past masters I actually have in the can. All the prep work's been done. There are three um, really good ones in the studio, just waiting for photography, and they've been waiting a while because, um, as I've indicated, uh, I, I I do a lot of juggling with my. Why well, do you want to call it free time? Because it's not really. Uh, I have a um, in the studio painting practice that I do six days a week although God knows sometimes very little painting seems to get done there but pardon me for the uh, the other sniffle um, and then uh, at the house I have uh, you know I have to photograph all the paintings and um, process the videos and then that was all going real well until I added in back in uh, doing music, which is something I'm very passionate about and uh, actually quite good at, if I don't say so myself. And, um, pardon me. Since I added the music in uh, a little over a year ago, it's I've just been behind the eight ball. Uh, and you've heard it, so I won't keep belaboring it. But suffice to say, this week I will uh, I will break out the camera and um, and I'll get I'll get busy I'll get cracking on that uh, because uh, you know I've got I've got three more, so that would be three weeks, and that might be enough time for me to actually get into a few more master studies. So. 
something is tickling my nose today, boy. Uh, see if we can just get through it with a... I may, I may be able to chop that out in post-processing, yay. Um, so, uh, I did get some painting done in studio this week. Not, it's it actually just looking at February and March. I haven't, haven't been setting the world on fire. I think a lot of things have been, um, distracting me and, uh, and, uh, sometimes it's a little tougher to make sure you're actually getting painting done. Um, I had started quite a few paintings and I have some good ones on the, uh, drawing rack and, uh, Yesterday, I, I hunkered down and finished one of them, and um, that's good because uh, we need to clear the uh, clear the slate and make room for. Uh, uh, it's been since December that I did uh, these past masters studies. I spent a good portion of my painting in December doing uh, past masters, and uh, I like to maybe. Uh, I don't know, three, four times a year, spend a, a, a period of time doing those. Uh, there's a couple reasons. One is it's really a way of addressing my own education as a painter. I feel it makes me makes me much stronger as a painter. Um, two, we uh, you know we get nice videos from it that uh, other people can watch and enjoy, and you know maybe you can learn something too, just seeing how I put things together. Um, there's quite a lot of videos on uh, YouTube uh, by me uh, showing my... Ooh, looks like we missed some. I wondered why this painting was so short, so we missed a bit of the uh, first uh, lay-in of the uh, the greens on the tree. And I, I should say in the in the case of Corot, when I, when I say green, I almost use that term very loosely because his greens always were just packed full of grays. And uh, that's how I that's how I go after them. I pack them full of grays, and I pack them full of. Uh, I tend to use a lot of, like the transparent earth yellow uh, when I'm working with him because it's kind of uh, working after you know going after a copy of a, a Caro. Um, but also I have that gray mixture on my palette. Uh, I use a bit of that, and um, Mike's green. So Mike's green being. Uh, Hence the yellow medium from from Gamblin and uh, black, um, and then I will just start adding gray to that, and then a lot of times I'll modify that with a uh, like raw umber, and I think raw umber would be a totally critical color for getting a Camille Corot type of look. Keep in mind with Corot that um, he's a pre-impressionist. <laughs> Apologize for the sniffles here, but I did avoid the second sneeze, so I spared you that. Um, he's a pre-impressionist, so a lot of the work he's doing is prior to the uh, the um, innovation that came about with uh, color pigments in the mid uh, the mid 18 uh, 1800s, uh, where suddenly a lot of pigments that were much brighter and um, intense um, became available to artists to use and this is one of the things people aren't aware of that really sparked and uh, created the impressionist movement in art um, the other thing um, that was contributed to impressionism was was Camille Corot and his uh, and his um, advancement of the approach to uh, uh, landscape painting in that there's a diffusion of detail um, and a movement of air into the scene that is really pretty revolutionary uh, and his work bears um, you know some real close examination by anybody that wants to be a landscape painter and there's quite a few books uh, available about his work I I haven't bought anything new but I'm always finding um, I'm always finding um, books in used bookstores and things because he's one of these guys that you know is known so that's good I mean so many of the artists that I really dig uh, 
there's nothing out there about him. There's no, almost nothing. Francis Murphy being a great example. You know, Francis Murphy was referred to as the Corot of the United States. Although, you know, when you look at what he would do with color, not really, you know, not at all. But the things they had in common, they had some compositional approaches in common for sure. And also, sometimes Murphy could be really good at getting that air in the trees kind of feeling as well. Yeah, although I don't think it was a priority to him. And when you look at a Corot painting in real life, you'll see that he accomplishes this with a multitude of very small strokes that are, uh, you know, where he varies the color from the sky color or the tree color colors that would represent branches and things and it's almost a pointillist kind of approach except instead of dots they're like little um, arrow pointed kind of long rice grains I would say fat think fat tapered rice grains I gotta apologize again for the sniffling folks I I would stop and pause the audio but uh, you know we might not even get this done uh, which I guess uh, so we've covered lots of stuff about the painting here I want to talk about um, social media uh, because that's something I've been thinking about and social media's impact on artists and um, there can be a lot of very positive impacts on our on your art and your art career with social media and a big old parcel of negative outcomes and impacts and um, I've had some experience and exposure to this. I have to start off with my uh, little diatribe here by saying that I'm not very, um, I'm not the kind of personality that's very adept at social media, mostly because I just really don't care about it. And I don't, I don't want to, um, I'm interested in things like substance much, much more so than uh, just light entertainment or you know whatever i let's just say it's not my thing but i've taken a, a good crack at it and uh i was reading a um a kind of an article about this the other day and one one way social media can really impact your art uh, and and i think potentially a negative way and i've had some exposure to this maybe on youtube is that you might do a, a type of painting that gets a big response you know and now <clears throat> sometimes we do paintings that that people really really like and um we may or may not actually it's not any different to us than any other painting we've done yet because we want uh, either a sale or we want some acclaim or positive attention nothing wrong with any of those three things by the way um, however as motivating factors in the creation of your art they can be very suspect all of those money attention and praise mm, not necessarily really good for your art with the best thing I think for your art is to sort of have a mission and then go about accomplishing it you know um, and not be too swayed by something being um, real popular or not um, but what happens to a lot of artists is they might put a post up on social media if, that could be I mean let's face it YouTube is a form of social media it's a bit different than Facebook and Instagram and uh, I know almost nothing about Twitter so I won't even comment on that but uh, I've been on those other two platforms and you know you put something up it gets a big response you know it's natural human nature to go wow wow maybe I should be doing more of those like uh, the storm uh, scene with the lightning hitting the cow <laughs> I haven't done a painting like that I'm just kidding but um, you know what I mean it's like uh, I need to do another uh, painting with a lightning bolt hitting maybe I'll have a lightning bolt hitting a goat and then you say oh that didn't do as well as something about the cow <laughs> next thing you know you're chasing you're chasing after this right you know and the same thing I've seen it happen here and I'm almost out of time here but I'll try and get this one real quick I've seen the same thing happen in all my years uh, when I was in the picture framing business you know you see an artist put out a poster and it does well and next thing you know everything they do looks like that so watch out for that 
Don't let that happen to you. Anyway, I gotta go. Thanks for joining me today. We're all out of time. I'll be back uh, midweek with a, uh, another video though, so uh, until that happens and uh, we get together again, please take good care and stay out of trouble. Sorry for the snipples, by the way. <laughs>